Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of Generation Next. Now, this week, we're going to be answering all your questions about the PlayStation 5. It, it's huge. Uh, because we got them in. So, joining me to help answer these questions, we've got Xbox expert Jordan Ramey. What's up? And PlayStation Pro Tumor Hussein. Absolutely ready to be engorged on these consoles, lads. What do you mean? Like you'd be engorged because you've eaten too much? That doesn't don't make sense. Don't ask questions. Don't, don't follow, ask don't a follow-up question. Don't ask questions. <laughs> What's wrong with you? How many times have we done this? Too many. All right, let's get into it. All right, first question coming from Pro TC. Without the stand, does the console wiggle around while sitting? So if you're having it vertically, Technically, you could have it without the stand, but I wouldn't recommend it. The stand kind of gives it extra purchase. Uh, also, it screws into place, so it feels way more secure if you have the stand when it's vertical. If you're having it horizontal, you won't be able to use it without the stand, especially if it's the disc version, which is the one that we have. The Because it's not flat on either side, it obviously has those curves. Um, it's very easy to like unbalance it and so obviously that's not something you want to have if you've got a disc in there so use the stand um one thing i'll say about the stand is that like i said on the bottom it screws in which is super useful but on the side it just kind of like perches over the edge mm. and it doesn't have a click or any kind of feedback that tells you that it's really snugly on there and so one bit of advice i'll also give is that the stand obviously has rubber soles on the bottom great Beals album but like <coughs> rubber soul if you turn it like if you're I don't know moving it to try and get the cables in around the back it comes off very easily so mm. be warned yeah my recommendation is if you can not everyone is a capable of it but like vertical is the way to go it feels stable mm -hmm. and it I feel like of the two uh, orientations vertical looks better as well to me um, and if you get like the the Sony Pulse headset, you can also kind of use it as a, a kind of like place to leave as you can see that I'm doing here. Mm -hmm. Like I've got my uh, headset just like resting on top of the console and it works really nicely. Um, and then I just take it off when I need it. Uh, and it feels way more stable when it's vertical than it is. I initially had it horizontal and I was like, I don't like this. And I put it vertical. It definitely looks very aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, for Vertical, sure. Yeah. And also because of the way the vents are, I feel like for some reason, I feel like I'm giving it a better chance of staying cool vertical um, just because of the way it pushes the air out. Um, and when it's horizontal, I don't know, for some reason, I feel like the fans are quite like, they're not getting as much to work with in terms of space. The surface area feels a little more like compact and tightened. Um, that's just like brain, my brain reading it like that. But I, I would recommend vertical over horizontal. All right. Next question from, I'm sorry if I butcher this, but Aquil Monthas? I think that's Aquil. Aquil? Early impressions on the DualSense controller. Here it is. Um, so there is a lot to like about the DualSense controller. Honestly, I mean, Elite Series 2 is my favorite controller. And this one... I, I would say, like, it's not as heavy as the Elite Series 2. It's heavier than the DualShock, and it has a, it's bigger, so it, like, feels better in your hands. DualShock 4, for me, like, I have very bad repetitive strain injury in this arm, and, like, I can't play some games for a long, long period of time. Like, I was playing Persona 5 Royal the other day, and I was literally playing left-handed just, like, working my way through because I just couldn't hold on for too long. Whereas I did like a couple of really long gaming stretches on the dual sense at the weekend and it felt really great. Like it felt way more ergonomic for me. Mm -hmm. um, the haptic feedback and adaptive triggers are super cool. And so Astrobot comes preloaded on the console. And honestly, that is a really cool whistle stop tour of how all the functionality in the dual sense works. There's really cool bits like where Astrobot is, uh, like in this spring-loaded suit and you have to hold the trigger at different strengths to like get a different height of your jump which is really cool mm. um it's super responsive i like that the buttons are a little softer to press on the on the face triggers feel uh sorry the thumbsticks feel pretty similar just like it's a really nice controller and i think the haptic feedback works super super well astrobot is yeah like i said the the showcase for that 
Yeah, I think in terms of, like Lucy said, it's a bit heavier than the DualShock 4. Um, it feels good though. Uh, the one thing that has taken me some getting used to is the bottom of the actual um, controller where it used to have rounded edges is now tapered off. Um, and I'm used to like resting like the bottom of my palms in that. And now it's like, it feels like it, it, it kind of like it's harder to do that it kind of like presses down which is like it's easy to get used to it but um it's just a bit unexpected um the buttons feel a slightly more clicky but not in an unsatisfying way um the yeah and the other thing is like the the home button is no longer a circular button it's just it's 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 molded after the playstation symbol so if you're used to like like uh, elegantly moving your finger over to like to to hit the button you might it might take some getting used to to like instead feel the playstation symbol otherwise it's it's pre a pretty good controller i've found aesthetically it's really nice as well the white um does require a little bit of maintenance i found but we'll come to that later yeah i mean honestly the white looks a little more gray to me doesn't look as stark as i think all the marketing stuff would suggest um also it also has a mute button because the micro there is a microphone built in to the dual sense and it has a little mute button on it so you can just be like oh no i'm not talking to you today but it's it's a nice controller i like it Diego coming in with a little bit of uh, investigative journalism. It seems that the HDMI cable included in the PS5 box is an high-speed HDMI, and not an ultra-high-speed, which would mean that it's 2.0 and not 2.1. Can you look? Can you please look into this? I'm gonna lay out the facts as I know them yet, because we're still waiting on Sony to confirm that HDMI. I don't personally have the ability to test this at home. I don't think Tam does either. On the Xbox Series X box, it says ultra high speed HDMI. On the Xbox Series S box, it says high speed HDMI. On the PlayStation 5 box, it says high speed HDMI. So that's what we know so far. We're waiting on confirmation. Mm. It leads me to believe that it's a 2.0 based solely on wording but I don't have an 8K output that I can test it on. So we're waiting for our tech boys and Sony to confirm that. Yeah. I say now that, that you put that out into the world, thanks to the luck of this show, Sony's definitely oh, going gonna to get announce confirmed. that between Wednesday. They're going to be <laughs> like, there's, actu <laughs> there's actually a little white sticker next to the word <laughs> high. If you peel it off, it says ultra. Yeah. Surprise. <laughs> so so that's what we know so far. I just don't want to have any misinformation out there. I'm not going to outright say it is or it isn't. That's just what my conclusions lead me to believe. But yeah, happy to be wrong and grow from the experience, you know? No, I hate being <laughs> no. wrong. No. Coming from Chris Kelly Films. Absolutely sizzling. Oh my God, I hate yeah. that Tam has influenced <laughs> the question. <laughs> Absolutely sizzling for some PS5 info. I would like to know about the PSVR camera adapter and if it's included in the box. It is not included in the box, my friend. However, you can request your PlayStation VR camera adapter by going to camera-adapter.support.playstation.com forward slash en. Um, I'm glad that got that in one take. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so you'll need that adapter. Um, you can go there. I believe it's free. Um, and then I think it requires a serial number from you um mm. to to get the actual uh adapter sent out to you but yeah i think it, it makes a lot of sense that they didn't just include it in in the box i know people are like why didn't you just include it it's because it's it is an expense to manufacture pack in and distribute and there's no guarantee that literally everyone who has a play or bought a playstation vr will want it and there's no reason to include it and assume that everyone has one i was gonna uh, say like compared to how many PSVR units are sold. Definitely hit a million, maybe mm. closer to two. I'm not sure of the most recent sales figures compared to, I don't know, you're looking at over 100 million PS4s sold. Yeah. Don't know how many they've done in pre-orders for PS5, but it's yeah. yeah, it's just not economical to put it in every yeah. box. It could have been a lot so, of like wasted space and redundant like uh, inclusion in, in uh, if like a lot of people didn't have it. Yeah, they probably would have had to charge more. They saw what yeah. happened with the Xbox yeah. One and Connect. They didn't want to do that. <laughs> Basically, they were like, if you care enough, <laughs> tell us and we'll send you one for free. 
Coming in from downtown Griffin Brown. GameSpot, do your hands sweat quickly while holding the DualSense or does it take a while for your hands to sweat while holding it or not at all? Just asking because I have very sweaty hands and want to know what to expect. Sweaty hand gang, let's go. Um, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was kind of leaving the pause there because I wasn't sure who was gonna. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I will, I don't have like extra, extraordinarily sweaty hands, but I do like, I'm a gamer, you know, I hit buttons really quickly. I've got a lot of APM. I'm a gamer. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm hitting headshots, landing dragon punches, doing one frame links. I'm, you know. Was any of that right, Overwatch? I couldn't tell if any of that was over. <laughs> Apex, <laughs> Apex gamer here, so my hands tend to get sweaty. Um, it, the dual sense doesn't like. I, I can't measure. Is there an accurate way to measure how a piece of technology like, draws <laughs> sweat? Uh, there are like uh, hydrosis. Is that? Yeah. I think that's what it's called. Hydrosis sensors that they measure in psychometric testing. Don't have one of those, but I will say, um, it doesn't get. I don't think my hand sweats any more than it would with any other controller. The difference with this one is the texture of the DualSense is, it's like a matted textured finish. Um, unlike the more glossy, sleek, slicker DualShock. Um, so what tends to happen is like you can feel it more instead of like it being, you know, it feeling like, you know, your just hands is warm or whatever. And if you are a very, very sweaty hand person, you might notice that the dual sense coloration changes quite quickly. You might, if you take a close look at it, you might see some grime, as you might have seen earlier um, on the hit video game website, gamespot.com. The actual texture of the back of the dual sense is made up of thousands of tiny PlayStation symbols, squares what a, and circles. What a talented and X. photographer who must yeah. have got that shot. <laughs> yeah, who was it? Who had to was be it? walked through it over Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you can see that picture that Lucy took there, but like those PlayStation symbols are trapping some of your hand grime, baby. Dude, so. I'm at the stage now. I don't know where you can see it. So I have had this mouse for like four years and it's at the point where I'm getting some mad grime. Eat the grime. No, but like <laughs> this is this is a black mouse and mm. like, oh my God, there's like, What's the mouse equivalent of an ass groove on a couch? Because <laughs> I've got it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so because of the textured finish, one, you'll probably notice that you're sweating a bit more. Two, you might find that the coloration is like, uh, the, co the controller is holding grime a bit more. I did notice after a long session of gaming, because I'm a gamer, you know, I play in long sessions. You're a gamer. Um, yeah. I, I looked at my controller and it was like slightly grayed. Um, but like I just wiped it off and it was fine. Damn. Um, Bold of Sony then to lead with Demon Souls as a launch title it, for a PlayStation we'll Five. See, we'll see. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's 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 my. That has been your sweat minute. Damn. Never never thought I'd be friends with a game. <laughs> Speaking of DualSense coming from Shadow Slayer, does the DualSense haptic feedback feel like the HD rumble on the Switch or is it completely different? If so, is it better or worse than HD rumble? God, it's so much better than HD rumble. <laughs> <laughs> HD rumble is... Um, uh, how would you describe it? Like I w During that pause. I just imagine Miyamoto's head slowly turning to look in your direction. <laughs> yeah, it's like what? the eye. It's what, Lucy? <laughs> HD Rumble is um, not delicate. Let's put it that way. Yeah. It's very like, Arr! it's vibrating. You hit something. Arr! I think what the dual sense also has going for it is it's not just the rumble and the vibration. It works really well with the triggers, um, which, you know, they can they can manually adjust the tension on triggers. So when that's combined with like subtle vibrational movements in the controller, it leads for a more like immersive and different experience. It genuinely feels like unique and new in the way that they're doing it. Um, it's like surprisingly exciting as a feature. I hope that more people, more developers use it. It did, did remind me of the sensation you get when you 
got the original like Xbox controller and were playing uh, one Xbox One controller and were playing like Forza and you could feel like when you're going on different terrains while while driving um, it feels like that like cranked up to 11 and you can like when you run on certain surfaces you can feel the change in the vibration and you know certain behaviors will have different uh, feel to it which is good yeah there's been a bunch of stuff that developers have said in like blog posts about you know d the devs behind Ghostwire Tokyo and um, obviously Miles Morales, um, Ratchet and Clank, they're all saying the different ways that they're using the DualSense so I definitely think in this first wave, this first push of PS5 titles that developers will be utilizing it and I just really hope it continues because it's it's really cool like it's there's, yeah, there's bits in Astrobot where you're like gliding on ice and it feels really different yeah. to just walking on. Like, oh yeah, because you go from sand to walking on ice and like it feels different even just walking. So it's super cool. It'll be cool to see how third party studios handle all of those features because we only hear about it right now with all of Sony's first party studios and their yeah. games. Yeah, there's, there's certain games that we've seen already. Like, for example, Demon's Souls, we saw like the... The weird repost, new repost animation where the character lifts the enemy up into the air and like slams him to the ground. And I bet Blue Point are all over that with like oh rumble, God, yeah. and they're gonna be in there. God, that'd be so cool. Coming in with the last question, Chris Tiagi asks, "Do you need a new TV to support the HDMI 2.1? Given with the PS5, an HDMI 2.1 cable is an HDMI cable. Like it doesn't matter if you don't have an 8K." or uh, TV, like you'll be able to use a 2.1 cable as your HDMI cable. Hmm. So until we've got clarification on whether or not it is a 2.1 in the PS5, hmm. you don't need a new TV no. unless you want to play stuff at 8K. Which I don't think- Who's doing any... all that? Yeah, it's, who's doing it's, that? It's really not worth buying an it's, 8K yeah, TV no. at this now point. Is, now is, if you're thinking about <laughs> buying an 8K TV, unless you are a millionaire and really have no worries about your finances, I wouldn't recommend it. I can't even think of a game that's coming out that supports 8K. Yeah. Maybe there's one, and I'm yeah. just dumb and can't think of it. I, but. Yeah, you know, if you're buying an 8K TV, you're doing it to flex. In which case, more power to you. So those are the questions that we can answer at this moment in time. Uh, we'll obviously be able to talk more about the console over the coming weeks. So if you've got more questions for about the PlayStation 5 for us, uh, leave them in the comments or tweet them at us or we'll probably do another YouTube community post. Um, there is other PlayStation 5 stuff going on this week and Xbox stuff too. Don't worry, we're not forgetting about the Xbox. So. Tam, do you want to talk about PlayStation stuff happening uh, that should be live by the time this goes out? Yeah, so in terms of PlayStation stuff, the big one is uh, that we have a Demon Souls uh, interview, which is going to be live on site um, as a written piece. But you can also watch the interview and fall on site as well. And then we've got uh, a kind of condensed version of it, which breaks down everything that fans and people interested in the game need to know about it before it comes out. Um, I did the interview myself. Um, and so I asked a bunch of quite specific questions that have been plaguing my mind and I got a few good answers. So if you're interested in the game, check out that video. There's some good stuff in there, good content in there um, and read it on the website as well. And in terms of Xbox, huge news this week. Uh, we've got the unboxings in for the Series S and Series X, um, as well as all that stuff about backwards compatibility, which is really cool. And now that we can start testing on the Series S, which is awesome. We're all working on stuff coming out for Series X and PlayStation 5 that we can't really talk about. Yeah, this is the second to last episode of Gen Next to come out before the next gen consoles come out. So like, we're all working on stuff. We just can't talk about everything that we're working on. <laughs> We've signed legal documents. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Phil Spencer is just hanging out outside my apartment going, I dare you to make a mistake. <laughs> just Shuhei Yoshida handing him a clip. Like, I'm here. What? <laughs> what? You, th you thought that team up at the Game Awards <laughs> was for show. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, remember, put your questions in for the PlayStation 5 and we'll see you next week. Bye. See ya. For the PlayStation 5, it's not like we're gonna ask it like, hey, <laughs> PS5. Mr. PlayStation, how do you feel? <laughs> I'm good, Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> was that Goofy? No, that was like a Goofy mixed with Mickey. Uh -huh.
Tam, do you want to talk about PlayStation stuff happening uh, that should be live by the time this goes out? I have no idea what you're talking about. Demon Souls, mate. <laughs> 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 Did I mention that I've not had any sleep? <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, Tam, you are doing it's PlayStation you stuff. Who's doing it. <laughs> I, I, I literally forgot that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> There's your out, outro. <laughs> there you go.